Greetings, ladies and gentle fish. Now, it occurred to me that uh, I haven't shown any gameplay from the AT-15A in over a year. Which seems a little bit remiss of me, seeing as uh, this thing received a buff, and I think the last video I put up about it was pre-buff, so I thought it was long past time that we had a bit of AT-15A gameplay. So, for those who don't know, the AT-15A is the premium tier 7 British tank destroyer. And I say that it got some buffs, what buffs did it get? Well firstly, it used to have 850 health and you'll notice it now has 1050 if you look at the bottom left corner. So firstly, um, it was given a buff to its hit point pool. The second buff that it received um, was to its matchmaking. It used to get regular matchmaking which with the gun was rather painful, more on that in a minute, um, and now it gets uh, limited matchmaking, so it only sees tier 7 and 8 games. The gun, of course, is the ubiquitous 17-pounder that you get on every British tank ever at the mid-tiers. Um, this is a pretty accurate version of the gun, fast firing, fast aiming, with quite a wide gun arc. Um, and in this first game, it is being played for us by Trilloch1945. Now, he is uh, one of the dingers. He plays on the EU server. And because he's a dinger, don't be surprised if you see some gratuitous APCR spam at some point. It wouldn't be a dinger replay if there wasn't some gold used. Anyway, we're here on... Good lord, what on earth is the name of this map? Live Oaks. There we go. And it's a tier 7 game, so Trilloch is top tier. Um, now, this uh, is good news for the AT-15A, like a lot of the similar style British tank destroyers, it has quite good armour. Um, I should actually quickly mention that both of the games I'm going to show you are from before this tank received a HD model, which seemed to give it another buff in buffing its armour. So bear that in mind, the armour appears to now be better than it was when this game was played. And the same will be true for the second game that I have to show you. So, so far in the town, we've got uh, an FV-201 A45, that's the British Tier 7 Premium Heavy Tank. We've also got a T-29, the American machine, of course, though the T-29's having the stuffing kicked out of him by that uh, AMX. So, Trilloch has immediately switched to the APCR ammo. Um, now, I believe in his video description, in the description he sent me, he said it was because, you know, he just wanted to make sure he got some damage done. Which, you know, if, if that's what he wants to do, that's fine. Um, the one thing I would say about this replay, and to anyone looking at the AT-15A and trying to judge its performance or anything, I don't think Trillic shoots a single target in this game that would have required APCR ammo. I think he'd have been absolutely fine with his good old-fashioned regular armour piercing. Um, so... It doesn't make a difference, one way or the other, in this particular game. Um, and the second game I've got to show you, um, there's not as much APCR used. but In fact, I don't think there's any used. But all the same. Um, he's put a couple of shots into that M6, put one shot into the Tiger. Found the FV-201. Now, you have to be a little bit careful here coming around this side. The AT-15A has pretty good side armour. Um, but if the enemy team have tank destroyers camping up on the hill at sort of D1, E, uh, D2, you can still find yourself in some difficulty. Now, this FV201 has put himself in a terrible position. Trillic just pumps shot after shot into his side, setting him on fire, killing him, and keeping him tracked. And all the FV could shoot at was um, Trillic's well-angled frontal armour, which was just never going to go well. So he did manage to put one shot into Trilloch to kick proceedings off. Um, hence Trilloch has taken a little bit of damage. He's taking a bit of a risk here in exposing his side to that T29. I think that was a bit of a mistake. Um, and he suffered uh, a damaged engine for his troubles. And that shot as well, it was against the highly angled side of the M6. That was very unlikely to penetrate APCR or no. He really wanted to bring the gun over a little bit and just shoot at that shoulder section. And then he would have probably picked up the kill on that M6. Um, but all the same. So Trillet could be repairing his engine here. I mean, to be honest, right at this very second, it doesn't make too much difference. Yeah, that shot against the side of the T-29's turret was never going to work. But that one into his hull would do the job nicely. And really, the shot Trillet had there wasn't really into the side of the turret. It was more towards the front of the turret, I guess. And there's artillery. Everyone loves them. 
So if you look at the minimap, you may notice that the friendly base is looking rather bare and exposed. So that's just something to be aware of. Scoreline is 9-10. Um, and also worth pointing out, the enemy team, uh, there is a T-28 heavy tank concept. That, of course, is the reward for the second batch of personal missions. Um, and in many ways, actually, I think a tank that is quite similar to the AT-15A. Especially prior to the AT-15A's matchmaking change. Anyway, Trillic is pushing on toward the enemy base. He's repaired his engine because the AT-15A with a damaged engine is quite a painful experience. His AMX, T-21, Crusader SP and Tiger, by the look of it, are all heading back to defend the friendly base. Um, and I'm just going to speed this along ever so slightly because watching an AT-15A get into position can be a rather tedious affair. Um, both of the enemy tank destroyers are over toward the friendly base, so Trilloch won't have to worry about those. He's only really got to be concerned with, therefore, the artillery, the Rudy, and the VK. Biggest threats, of course, there being the artillery, as the Rudy and the VK, um, while they can definitely penetrate the AT-15A, they will struggle. So the friendly team managed to take up both of those tank destroyers, leaving the score 11-10, and they have successfully defended the base. Trilloch, on the other hand, has pushed up and found the enemy VK. Now, he has to be a little bit careful here. The VK is spotting him, and of course, that means artillery can absolutely wreck him. So, I would be tempted, if I were him, to be moving a little bit now, because, as I mentioned, artillery. And that shot actually damages Trilloch's gun as well, and he's already used his repair kit on the engine, so he can't repair that damage. But, Trilloch takes the hint from the game, and moves forward. I always find getting shot is the game's way of telling you to be somewhere else. Has to be a little bit careful here. If he gives his armor at too flat an angle to the VK, he can be penetrated, but he he angles um, the side of the tank at just the right moment to mean that VK doesn't penetrate him. Finds the enemy artillery. One shot. RT misses. And there's kill number three. So that just leaves the Rudy and the VK. Both of the artillery have been dealt with. This VK is being rather bold. Let's go with bold. Yeah, let's say bold. Um, ballsy is another way of putting it. And Trilloch is advancing on him now in a straight-up match. The VK can certainly damage the AT-15, but uh, the AT-15 will, what on earth, have the better of that engagement. This Rudy, I'm wondering if this guy is having some serious lag problems or something. This guy's picked up four kills, so he's not a complete scrub. But his turret is pointing the wrong way. He's not moving anymore. I think this guy's having connection problems. That's the only thing that I can think, because holy mother of God, that was weird. And that just leaves this VK um, wondering what he did to deserve this um, this outcome, I guess. He's a tier 5 tank in a tier 7 game, and he's currently being engaged by a tier 7 tank destroyer and a tier 7 heavy tank, uh, which is perhaps not the best situation for him. Is the Tiger going to pick up the kill? The Tiger has a shit ton of health. He can just take the hit. Why is the... Okay, if the Tiger's not going to pick up the kill, that's fine. Trilloch will come round and finish the guy off. Not a problem. And there we go. That's the game. So let's go and have a look at the results. So here we go, that was an ace tanker for Trilloch, along with arsonist, bruiser, fighter, duelist, fire for effect, shellproof, steel wall, and the high caliber medal, which is quite a nice haul of awards. 2,882 damage, 5 kills, and 1,191 base experience puts him at the top of the friendly team. Um, special mention should also probably go to the AMX M4, who also had a decent game. Picking up some spotting damage, maybe? Yeah, picking up 1,500 assistance damage into the bargain. Um, and also the T21 had a pretty decent game. Looking at the enemy team, the well, the um, there was a Panzer II that I hadn't noticed for some reason. and Oh, it's a Panzer II Lux, never mind. Panzer II Lux had a decent game. The Rudy had a good game, despite his bit of derpery at the end. I can only assume that was because of internet problems. If we look at the detailed results, Trilloch fired 26 shots, 23 hits, 20 pens, which is not too bad for that damage count. Received 13 hits, of which 2 penned, 11 didn't. Bearing in mind he also took some damage um, from an artillery shell there. Blocked 1440 damage with his armour. Spotted 4 enemy tanks. 
and when you spot four enemy tanks in a slow ponderous tank destroyer you know that means that you're just rolling forwards and killing people damaged seven killed five and got a little bit of assistance damage into the bargain now he still made a profit despite the 20 rounds of apcr fired but that was only because he was running a standard account if it had been running sorry only because he was running a premium account if he'd been running a standard account, he would have lost 19,000 credits. Now, as I say in that particular game, he didn't need to fire any of those APCR rounds. All the targets he shot at were perfectly penable with um, armor piercing, but that was his choice. Um, if I were to offer any advice with this, I would say choose your shots a little bit more carefully. There was one shot, for example, on the front of the side of the turret of the T-29 that was never going to penetrate, and another shot... Uh, on the angled M6, shot him in the side armor, which was pretty much always going to bounce at that angle. Whereas um, Trilloch did actually have a shot in the frontal shoulder section of that tank, which would have penetrated and killed the guy. And that would have actually allowed Trilloch to pick up a top gun from that game. As it is, he only got, I say only, as it is, he only, quote unquote, got five kills rather than the sixth for that top gun. So that would have secured his top gun. But nonetheless... Um, a very nice result there from the AT-15A. So, let's go and have a look at another bit of gameplay. So, here we have the second game. Uh, as you can see, this is one of my games. Um, I decided to play the AT-15A for a batch. I think this was when they had the WZ-111 uh, marathon mission on, on the EU server. So, I was playing the AT-15A for a bit to remind myself what it was like, really. Now, the previous game from Trilloch was a tier 7 game, so it was top tier matchmaking. This is a tier 8 game, which, as I mentioned in the previous uh, game, <coughs> considering the changes to the AT-15A's matchmaking spread, this is the worst matchmaking that the AT-15A gets. There is also artillery on both teams, and the AT-15A does not like artillery. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, this is an assault game on Corellia, and we are on the defending team. Now, I'm just going to speed this along a little bit at the beginning, because as I mentioned before, watching an AT-15A get into position is about as interesting as watching paint dry. I tried to see if I can get some shots on some light tanks over there, but really I need to prioritise getting myself into position. So my thinking at the moment is, yes, my tank is at the bottom of the feeding pool, but conversely, I do still have decent armor. My gun is perfectly capable of penetrating most of these guys without too much difficulty. So let's drive forwards and try and tank some shots, shoot some guys, all of that jazz. Now I took a shot there on the move against the AMX 1375. It could have hit. It didn't. It doesn't matter. I got plenty more ammunition. And it's not as if my gun reloads in about three and a half seconds. Oh wait, there's a rather ambitious VK who's probably gonna pay for his ambition. Oh, I try and keep my tank moving because I don't want to give people easy shots at my weak spots. You can see the Super Pershing there does appear to be aiming at those weak spots. Someone else nails the VK, so unfortunately my shot doesn't end up doing any damage. And we have a light tank behind us, which is slightly awkward. Super Pershing was overangling his armor, so I take advantage. And I tried to track the AMX there, but no joy. I take a hit from the bad guys. Where did that shot penetrate? I don't know if we can see it. There we go. So you have this... Um, little machine gun turret on the top which is where one of your loaders tends to live and that strip of armor just below it is kind of weak i should of course mention this is once again before this tank got a hd model so the armor has been rather buffed since super pershing i think he's over angling his armor there the super pershing sides are very weak there we go and so we can keep putting shots into them if he's just gonna let us like that he even managed to take out his track at one point and all of this, as I say, is with regular good old-fashioned armor-piercing ammo now. Slightly dodgy situation here. All my allies who are over here are, are dead. Um, and there's an AMX 1375 who is probably taking an unhealthy interest in my backside. Um, so this is slightly awkward. And we've got the standard gump in chat. People whinging and complaining and trying to find someone to blame about who, why they died. I take a HE round there from someone I have no idea who. It was quite a large caliber HE round, which was a little sad. Trying to pull back so the the uh, Super Pershing doesn't have easy shots on me. This guy's tracked, and with any luck, there's kill number one. Scoreline is 5-6, by the way. Now, with him dead, I hopefully should be able to turn around and deal with that AMX, but friendly T-34 has my back and executes the light tank. 
That leaves an AMX M445 up here on relatively low health. We do still need to be a little bit careful. <coughs> There's one shot. Because if this guy goes for my weak spots, I am dead. But, as it is, I managed to execute him for kill number two. And now the scoreline is 8-7 and we appear to be winning. So, that HE round I took in the rear, I reckon was probably from one of those... Maybe one of the tank destroyers, maybe an IS-3, thinking about it. Um, I have 239 health, which puts me in one-shot territory for everybody except the T-71, and it's two-shot territory for the T-71, and of course, bearing in mind he packs an autoloader, that's something to be wary of. And at this point, having looked at the map, I am falling back towards our base, because this is an assault game, and I do not want anyone being cheeky and capping our base while we are off doing other things. We don't want our team being caught with our trousers down, just going to speed this along again. And as you can see, that Ferdinand, who was last spotted up on the hill at G7, is A, on full health, <laughs> and B, he has come to our base. Now, he does spot me, which is a little inconvenient. I really do not want to get shot by the Borsig or the Jagdpanther 2. And the fact that I haven't been might indicate that both of those guys are actually no longer camping up on that hill. Anyway... Trying to move forward to give uh, my allies some assistance out with that Ferdinand. If the Ferdinand backs off behind the rock again, I can nail him, although I'm not convinced that's going to happen. Ferdinand nails our artillery. T-34 plonks a big shot into the Ferdy. There's the Borsig. The Jagdpanther 2 actually went down the hill to deal with our object 416. Ferdinand is dead. IS-3 is dead. We lost our M12 and our OI. And there's the Borsig. So 10 plays 10 with 3 minutes 50 on this game left. Remembering, of course, this is an assault game. If there are tanks left on both teams at the end, and if no one's capped anyone's base and all that jazz, by default, we, as the defenders, emerge victorious. Now, that Object 416 comes a cropper, as the Jagdpanther 2 had gone down to deal with him. Um, so it's a good thing I didn't go that way as well, if I'm going to be honest. And we've got a T-71 and a Rheinmetall Borsig who are being problematic. Now, I don't load high explosive rounds in this tank because it's tier 7. It's not far, so it's unlikely to be able to get flanking shots on people. And 76mm HE at tier 7 is a bit naff. Put one round into the Borsig. Two rounds into the Borsig. Really don't want to get shot by the guy. Three rounds into the Borsig, and the Borsig is dead. Bulldog picks up the kill. So there's two artillery and the Jagdpanther 2 remaining. The T-71 managed to get himself killed somewhere along the lines. And so the shift of this battle has gone, ooh, lucky Bulldog. Very much in the favour of our team. Um, as we have one tank more than them. And they only really have one proper tank. The other two are artillery, and artillery aren't really going to be assaulting anyone. And um, we are defending, of course. So the pressure is very much on them to come and kill us. Jagdpanther 2. Looked like that shot hit. I don't carry any sort of optical equipment on this machine. I think I've got rammer, vents, and the last slot. It's either a toolbox or it's a spore liner. I cannot remember which. I think it's a spore liner. Because I was sick of taking artillery hits, but I could be wrong. Jagdpanther 2 is a fast machine. Missed that shot on him, unfortunately. Really don't want to get shot by that guy. Gun depression on this tank is respectable, though. Low damage roll. The average damage on this gun is 150, so 127 is quite a low roll. But 163 is a high roll, so whatever. Also worried about getting artilleried. Take a snapshot at him. He hasn't aimed at me. It looks like he's aiming at me now, so I'm just going to wait for the bulldog to come in. One artillery hits me, the other one misses completely, leaving me on 100 health. The Jagdpanther 2 at this point could wreck me with a HE round if he's carrying any. But I'm just going to let the Bulldog come along. And there we go. Bulldog puts one shot in, I put one shot in and kill him. That's a dead Jagdpanther, and that just leaves the two artillery on the enemy team. And we are now under... 100 seconds left on this game. Why is 100 seconds important? Because you need 100 seconds, sod off arty. You need 100 seconds to cap a base on your own. Um, less than a minute left of this game now. So the only thing they're going to be able to 
Um, the only way they're going to be able to cap, if they tried to cap, is with both of their machines. And while the AMX is quite fast and might be able to try it, the Hummel is rather ponderous. And is never going to get over here in time. There is the Hummel, by the way. So essentially this game is, to all intents and purposes, now won. Bulldog's going to hunt down the Hummel. I don't have a shot on him. Hummel dies. That just leaves the AMX 13 F3. Going to speed this along a little bit. There he is. And that's the game. So, we managed to emerge victorious in the end, which was quite nice. Let's have, go and have a look at the results for this one. So, that ended up being an ace tanker, uh, spotter, shellproof, fire for effect, and steel wall. Not quite as many medals as Trillic achieved in the previous game, but still not too shabby. 2,341 damage, again, is a bit lower than Trillic received. Uh, th and 3 kills is less than Trilloc, but 1,214 base experience, which is higher than Trilloc. And that's a combination of two factors. Firstly, um, I was in a tier 8 game. Trilloc was in a tier 7 game. So generally speaking, I was shooting higher tier targets than he was, which gives you um, a, an XP bonus. And secondly, because I managed to pick up 1,660, basically, assistance damage. 28 shots fired, 20 hits, 18 pens for that damage count. 12 hits received, 3 penned, 9 didn't um, for that 1,470 damage blocked by armor. 5 enemy tanks damaged, 3 of them destroyed, traveled 1.7 kilometers. Of course, that's 1,600 assistance damage. And without a premium account, I made, bearing in mind I wasn't firing any premium ammo, I made a 43,000 credit profit. With a premium account, that would have been a 70, 71,000 credit profit. So this can be a fairly profitable machine. Um, if you don't fire APCR, and that was always the case, but since they've given it limited matchmaking, there is much less need to fire APCR, and so it's a more reliable money maker than it used to, used to be. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that pair of games in the British. Uh, premium tank destroyer, the AT-15A. If you did, then by all means feel free to catch some of my other videos and or subscribe to my channel. And I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.